Well, in five years, we have a 45% um, decrease in chronic diarrhea, and we've got a 95% decrease in the most harmful bacteria of hookworm, ringworm, roundworm. Those are the most those are the most dangerous ones. There's different names for them in Spanish, but um, that's pretty that's pretty impressive for us. And would right? you say that diarrhea and parasites were one of the biggest health issues in, in the communities? I I think for Wakadia, they were absolutely um, two factors that contributed to the poor health of the of the children and the community at large. Right? There were kids that were having diarrhea up to 20 days per month, right? And so we were able, because we had a health director in the community 18 days per month, we were able to conduct a health study over three years that um, did monthly monitoring of diarrhea, right, and illnesses. And then we did yearly parasite and anemia testing, height, weight, parasite and anemia testing. Obviously, if you're going to do a water project, you have to look at ways in which you purify the water, right? And so what we wanted to be, what, we, what I was committed to is doing it in an environmentally sound way in which the people could understand that was low technology. So I began to research different methods of water purification. And um, I came upon slow sand filtration and upon an environmental engineer from the U.S. named Humphrey Blackburn. And he was instrumental in, um, in helping us to achieve this uh, functioning system in Wakadia that, that purifies the water and removes 99.99% of the most harmful bacteria. I think for Manu, it's not one of the choices that, that, that I'm in favor of, just because at this point the people don't have the economic um, resources to replace batteries when they, when they die. So if we want to make people dependent on outside intervention and us always paying for things, then I think solar, solar is, is, is a good idea. You know, I think solar can be applied, or if communities have have economic, um, I'm saying ingresos. If they have economic, um, I'm I'm caught between Spanish and English. Um, if if they have a way to to have you know to to have dollar exchange in their communities and they can afford to maintain solar, then I'm all for it because I think that there's some really really great technologies out there that solar, uh, solar is facilitating for water purification. But in, in the jungle with native cultures, I, I stuck with uh, slow sand filtration because it was something that we were able to, um, to collect from the local riverbanks. You know, it's a it's a living machine. That's what I like about slow sand filtration, and it and it forms a biological layer in which, for lack of better terms, the little critters begin to grow in, and then they eat the harmful bacteria. So it's pretty, it's sustainable. the The water flows clean in Wakadia. The water is safe. The water meets um, U.S. standards, and um, the slow sand filter removes 99%, 99.99% of the harmful fecal bacteria, right? That's the Giardia, that's the E. coli. Okay, it's removing that. The filter has been constant in delivering those results. So the money that it takes, really, the rock and sand is free from the, from the riverbanks. The local municipal will donate that to the project. And so what we pay for is the transportation of that rock and sand to the community. And then the labor within the community, we, um, there's a water committee that's formed and that water committee uh, works to um, build the filter, right? So whatever, that's, that's 20 solas a day. What is that in, our, in US dollars? That's $8 a day that we pay for the water committee. 
and, and we pay, we only pay the water committee because they're working with us full time. So we take them away from their, from their gardens and their ability to, to make money in their community. But it's only the time, uh, we only pay them for the time in which they're, um, we're building the infrastructure of the project. Right. Okay. So the cost, you know, I, I didn't answer that. The cost is minimal, right? It's just for whatever the, the, the rock and sand, sometimes you'll have to pay for that. Mm -hmm. you, you, we pay for the transportation and then we pay for the personnel and then whatever engineering team we need to come in, whether it's from the U.S. In our case, it was from the U.S. We paid for a environmental engineer consultant to come in and supervise the, um, the building of the filter. So for maintenance, um, what, are, what are you working on? Maintenance is, 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 is pretty interesting. Basically, um, it's, they have to perform maintenance on the slow sound filter. Um, on the whole, let, let's back up. They have to perform maintenance four times a year on the whole system, right? They have to go in, they check it. They check that the, the structures are, are intact and that, um, that whatever maintenance, you know, whatever... Uh, maintenance has to be performed that that's done okay the slow sand filter basically has to be cleaned about once a month and and in Wakadia's case their slow sand filters are so big they actually enter the tanks and they take a rake and they just rake the top of the sand right and there's two valves on either side of the slow sand filter they open up those valves that that dirty water goes out and the new water comes in and the filters uh, continues functioning so it's okay it's well you know what it, it it's not hard at all it just takes programming the time to do it mm -hmm. right and i'm not saying sometimes they let the filter go it's called into backwash they let it go into revose but the really beautiful thing about a slow sand filter it'll stop the water will stop going through it so if they don't clean it they there's no water in the community so it's really slow sand filtration is great because it stops it it it, it stops the people in their tracks that say pay attention you have to you know take care of this in order for for us for for the filter to give yeah. to for, for the filter to begin producing the water again right. and it was said to be impossible Right. All the experts said that it was not possible. And as my environmental engineer said, don't think you will get U.S. standards of water quality. And we have U.S. standards of water quality. The next step is that we get to replicate this, that we get to bring this flow of water to other communities, that we allow them that experience right, to transform their health. People do have a lot of lot more material things as well, uh, but in on the other hand, you know, uh, being people from the rainforest, uh, especially native people, uh, even though they, it's on one hand it seems that they give so much importance to those material things, on the other hand they don't. It's not like they don't take care of them, and so they get material things, but they lose material things really fast as well. Like any machine they may have, you know, it functions for a little bit, but they are not used to the idea that they should maintain that, that they should work on it to maintain it. So it's gone. You know, I don't know if the amount at the moment has running water, you know. No. You know? no. But they have the whole system. You know, it's been put in there like, I think, like seven years ago or something. It exists, you know, but I think one of the things why they didn't think that was uh, something that they wanted to maintain, or maybe that's just my idea, but one of the things that I see is that for women it's really important to go down to the river and have their social thing, you know, so though I do think that there has been a lot of changes in the sense that they do have many more material things, um, I also think that in a sense looking beyond the material things, just looking at the social structure and how people are, people did not change.